your cranker. Oh, um, your cranker. Yeah. Alrighty, welcome back. I'm your man, Bad Chad, and I said we'd do it. We're back. We're in Eli's <laughs> shop. Um, we've gone from the museum to the workshop, and uh, right now we're just looking around at all the metal and the iron that's in here. It's quite fantastic, actually, the little spot that's going on here. I would never have pictured um, this amount of work being done by Eli and his two sons. Eli's, Eli's oldest son. Hi, I'm Alden. Isaac. They're the bad boys. And his wife. Hi, I'm Lisa. And, and Lisa was on, um, I was going to say, you, your picture was on the first racer of gentlemen. You were the lady that rode the, that car right there. Yeah, there she is right there. And that the cool thing is is that those were those that flag was hanging on all the street lights in downtown Milwaukee. So when we went out there to bring her car till to Harley Davidson to put on display in the museum, um, we didn't know it. We had friends that had been out there. They didn't tell us that she was on the buses and on all the flags. So we drive them like, holy shit, that's you on the on the signs that's awesome and we were like we were like this, there was like this boulevard and then there was like like every like other flagpole was her it was one, one right after the other it was awesome so. that's cool Pretty awesome. yeah but uh, so it is something to you know get inspired by to see you know the family doing this sort of stuff i mean people you know obviously anybody can do it if they can do it obviously just but get inspired from what they're doing and then you go on do what you need to do but i'm inspired looking at the stuff if you know what i'm saying i want to go home and make a bead roll now <laughs> uh, anyway. but anyways we're just looking about looking at the trunk in this car this is a 30 what 30 model a 30 model a and uh, he has made all the trunk stuff and all the inside the it's just the trunk panels i guess and uh, as i'm asking him when he bead rolled it did he stretch the metal before he done the bead rolling and some he has and kind of explain what's going on yeah so i'll run through the through the english reel just lightly in the opposite direction that i'm going to emboss the the metal and the reason being is I mean, we have to put the reason in because he's stretching the metal when you put it through the bead roller obviously right and when you get when you bead roll things it kind of goes wall because it goes because you've taken and stretched it so in order to make a nice panel sometimes you have to stretch it and then bead roll it yep because you're stretching the metal and uh, he's actually got these looking really, really, really nice in here. So I'm just asking him, you yep. know, how does he make it look really nice? So you run it, you run it through the through your English wheel, just on a light pressure, not a lot. You don't want to, you don't want to warp the panel, but you just put a little bit of pressure into it, and it goes in the opposite direction. You're going to do the embossing, and then when you're done, the panel actually comes out flat. Um, yeah, like so. I'm saying, if I bead roll something and I put it in with my self tapper, it's like this. Yeah. You know, and where where I'm, where he's doing it like this, he's got uh, glicos in there. Um, I don't use glicos; I use self tappers because it's going in, <laughs> and he's making it fit, um, taking the time to really make um, the customer happy, and um, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm asking about. Yep. You know, biggest thing too is when you do a bead roll too. Like for me, I like to make a pattern that I can use throughout the entire car. So if you look at these triangles, they start here at the back, and then they go down through the kick up in the floor and they go and they actually follow all the way to the front of the car so all the triangles line up and all of the little beads line up too and then all the shapes line up so that's that's my big thing is having these shapes you know this shape is the same all the way around and that's where this panel came in it actually see without that panel that shape is lost so by having that panel there it actually creates that so he's made a little piece here see so this is where like the toolbox and the um, battery will be hidden in the car um, the battery's gonna be a little bit difficult to put in this panel. We'll have to remove to get a battery in there. Yeah, but I've, I did have it mocked up. It will work. So. And also, if you take a look down in here, he's also got the beat, um, the panels made down inside. Yep. So, so he's not faking it. Yeah. So he's these great. these triangles line up with these triangles, line up with these triangles, and they go all the way to the front. Cool. And, it, and it actually isn't that difficult. Once you come up with a pattern that works, you can just repeat it over and over again. Right. And then you know, I lay it out on the table. You know, with a with a square and a, and a you know a measuring um, yardstick, and I can just lay it all out, and just make a repeat over. You've and over. chopped this car. Yeah, this one's chopped three inches. Amazing. That's nice. Like that's better than nice. It's amazing. You know what I mean? Like to to try to get rid of all your all your weld marks and all that sort of stuff. So, it, you know, I I would say that he's probably doing the best job that he can. Um, just the metal work going on here, making the lines fit and all that stuff. Sometimes you can get a little tight, you know, when you start doing the body work. And that's, I don't want to touch the car. You, know, you can touch that's fine. Nope. <laughs> it's, um, just, the, you know, making the lines like that. Yeah, awesome. Like I said, so up in here, originally a Model A has a, um, has a, a seam that comes across like this. And then the, uh, the top would actually, so the top would be here. 
and then it had this piece of material that would come across and go down here. So I didn't like that look, so I actually cut this section of roof right out and I made a whole new piece for it. I welded the visor onto the body and then made this piece, and then with my bead roller I made this wrap around so that now the top will actually follow this shape as opposed to being way out here. Um, it's, just, it's, just a, it's just a design thing, it's just an aesthetic. But to be different. It's to be different. It's yeah. to make, it's well, to make someone it, notice it. It's to make the car a piece of artwork versus just the car. Um, 32 Ford rails? Yep. Yep, and that, that's actually a chassis that customers supply me. It's a company called Blackboard Hot Rods in California. They build a really nice product. And we got the front end cut off. Yep, bobbed horns. That's what it's called, bobbed yep. horns. So this car is actually going to have a Hemi in it. Uh, it's getting a 291 ah. DeSoto. Stop Oops. that. Look at this. And right now, I'm waiting for the transmission to come in so that I can mock up the motor and transmission together and figure out our grill shell and all that stuff. Right. Now um, you'll know, he'll tell you if he wants a hood on it and all that stuff. It does make a difference, does it not, yep. where the motor goes and Absolutely. Yeah, if you're going to go with a hood and all that sort of stuff? Yep, yep. yep. So we'll, we'll be using, um, the ultimate goal is to, I, I like to cut the firewalls as little as possible to try and keep it, retain most of the originality of the car. Sometimes we have to, um, it is what it is, but um, I always try to fit the engines in the car with original hoods so that I can keep the aesthetic going. Right. Um, and this, will, this one will have a 32 grill. Eli, Eli was explaining earlier that he likes to make things for yep. the cars instead of buying things. And uh, he was showing me he was putting a headlight bracket on this car behind us. And uh, he was making it instead of buying it. And that way there it becomes a real hot rod. Right. Does it not? It does, yeah. yeah. And you know, obviously, I mean, there's certain things like this car obviously has some, some manufactured stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Some of this will probably go away but by the time we're done with the build. Um, I have a car in a booth that was full of manufactured parts, and we got rid of almost all of them because the car, it lost its soul. It was just anyone could put soul. together. <laughs> and um, to me, to, to have a car... I never lose it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> to, 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 have, to, to make a car have soul, to me, my opinion is that it needs to um, have either handmade or... I also like to use, like, say, say a car is built in a certain time period, say 48. So at that point, what I'll do is I'll there will be no parts on it newer than 48, but it might be, it could be a 48 Chevy part, it could be a 46 Ford part, and you mix them all up, and then you can come up with these really cool things, you know, cool like cars. Like the game of Yahtzee. Right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and, and right? you know, and the thing is, is so I, originally I worked at a restoration shop, so, and I was told by one of the owner's father, by the owner's father, that in order to build a real traditional hot rod, you need to first know how to restore a car. And so, if you restore multi-early Ford, multi-year early Fords, then you start to learn which parts you can take from a 46 Ford and put on a 32 Ford, and which part from a 32 you can put on a 40, you know, a 40 Ford. And you can mix them all up, and then you get these really cool things that are original parts that aren't supposed to be there. Yeah. Um, and I can show you in here on the car I'm doing in here what I mean by that. So this is nice. This is a 32 um, that I was talking about had a bunch of store bought stuff on it, and it was a pretty car. It was it was nice, but it just it didn't have the soul. So we went with earlier headlights. I, we bought I bought a set of headlight arms, and then I cut them down. And I made them look like that. I, sh I shortened them like two inches. I used. Would this be the headlight system that was on it? That's on the other car out there. Okay. Um, so this is I'm storing parts for a car to part right now too. But what I was getting at earlier about like the shocks and stuff or, or using earlier parts. So this is a 32 Ford. These are 46 to 48 Ford wishbones. So instead of having like tube shocks, what I like to use is I like to use the original 46 Ford shocks. I'm on the side of the frame like they would have been. And now you've got this really cool looking mechanical shock. Where do you get this stuff at? Can you buy that, that? Yeah, you can buy that stuff. So this is so that's the original link. And what I did is I, I attached it to the wishbone. So once this is on there, it all attaches. Yeah. And now you've got this cool functioning shock system that's actually early Ford parts on an early Ford. Um, but it's a different, you know, I said this car's a 32. These are 46. And these shocks are kind of neat. They're, they're actually adjustable. What a lot of people don't un understand is these are detents. See this little tab? You can actually turn that, and it's how much pressure that it has. And you can okay. see it's, it's a pretty rugged shock. I mean, you okay. can really... They work very, very well. Um, they're kind of hard to find in really good shape, but they're out there. And there is a place in New York that actually rebuilds them too. So that's just an example of taking a car and using found or making your own stuff. We have a, or I did a 
we have, me and Joey have a 40 uh, two-door that we made into a coupe. We put mm -hmm. it on a 47 Ford chassis. Yep. When it comes time to rebuilding that chassis, I'm going to be calling you to find out where to get pieces. Yeah, Because I, I was thinking, yeah, because I like this sort of stuff, I would know not know where to acquire that sort of stuff, The what are they called, the sway bar links? Yep. Yep, I'm more than the happy. Link? And believe yeah. it or not, that stuff's rarely available. There's a place nearby here or in Massachusetts that can get it. If I order by 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I have it by 10 o'clock the next morning. Are you serious? Yep. Wow. Yep. Well done. Yep. So, yeah, awesome. Oh. That's cool. So. I knew there were different wishbones because they had that shape in them. Yes. Yep. So right. those are 46 to 48. And then I have a louver press too. So this one here, I did I did these louvers. And what I did on this, the customer wanted a lot of louvers. So I actually pulled the stop out and I pressed them right next to each other. Usually there's a three-eighths gap. Right. So. Um, I didn't know you'd get them that close, actually. Like yeah, okay. on my Louvre uh -huh. die, these are Mittler Brothers, uh, not Mittler Brothers, uh, they're Tuck. And if you, there's a little space, you can take it out. So. So is there any deadline that you have to have this thing done by? It's kind of like when you get something done here, it, it gets done when it gets done, or it, it gets done how much you pay? It has to do with both. It has to do with... It has That's why with, I asked the question. Yep, no, it has to do with um, financial capability. It has to do with parts availability these days. That's really? part of it that goes into it. Um, you know, so it is, is a lot, there's a lot of things. And, you know, what happens inevitably these days, I have to have all these cars going at the same time because I run into a parts thing where I used to be able to get parts right away. Sometimes it takes me three, three weeks to a month to get parts now. Yeah. So I, this car gets put on hold. I work on the next one until I run out of parts. Sure, on do. I do love the dash gauge in this thing. It looks. Yep. So again, this car had here. real plain Jane gauges in it, yeah. store bought. So we, the customer, found an original. That's um, nice. Yeah, with all really old gauges. I like the wheel too. Actually, now I get looking at it. Yeah, you got that made out west. It's a beautiful steering wheel. That's yeah, beautiful. Yeah, so that's actually a piece of artwork. I mean, some it is, guy, yeah. there's a guy producing those. You know, you look at it, it's all brass rivets and. Um, Jolene, I see a big guy like. Ooh. Four post. I could find out who the guy's name. Very yeah. Nice. Wow. Um, and then, like, this is a Craft EV gas cap. That's a, something the guy produces. Yeah. You know. So when I put, I put some aluminum. Is this aluminum? Yes. You've got brass screws in that. Yep. Is it supposed to corrode against each other? I don't know. I put I put never sees on it. Okay. So. So when I put your firewall in your car, remember there was a lot of people saying about brass and aluminum. Yeah. So. Maybe it, technically, I mean, aluminum and steel does it too. So I mean. It, it doesn't really matter. It is what it is. It is what it is. And, I, and like I said, that you can protect it somewhat by using Never Seize, any anti seize product. Right. It's going to keep it, you know, a little bit lubed up. That's that's always been my theory on it. She's a real hot rod. She got the rake on her, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely got a rake to it. Um, so. No, and it's, cool. it's got a little tiny windshield. The windshield's only three and a half inches tall in the middle. That was I chopped that year and um, made the windshield. It's a lot of work to make that windshield A, lay back and B, be that short um, because what happens it changes all the geometry of the cowl shape yes so I did a lot of reshaping on this car in here to make all this work to get the windshield to lay back and land right someone would never know that exactly unless you told me yeah. I would think yeah you just you just bolted that on yeah there's a in, that didn't happen no no these holes are like so this this has been actually cut away because what happens is the further back you go the post they actually go out because of the shape of this yes so as okay. you rotate it it goes like yep. this so then you got to change basically what this is. This has been cut back. And then the holes in behind here have been changed to allow them to rotate. And, and then actually what I have to do is I chopped it, but then I had to actually rotate it back and pick these up to make it clear the reveal. So what has this, it's got a flat head in it yep. with. Nice, very nice. So. And this is this is really a driver car. It's, this isn't a show car. It's, this guy built it to drive. Um, I show this thing anywhere. So. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. it's it's still a beautiful car. Yeah. It's, um, I understand what you're saying. Like, I, I I get it, and I don't get it. Like, um, I would show that car anywhere. To say it's not a show car. Right. Um, I guess show cars are what can I say? Cars that are not finished yet or not driven. Not driven. Um, no show cars are not. Yeah. yeah, they're not driven, and that's and, and, and to me. Me, my personal take on it is that, what's the sense I have? I mean, if, you, if you're gonna build a car and go through the, the expense of it, make it so you can use it, make it so you can enjoy it. Like, <laughs> this isn't fancy paint, this is single stage. You right. know? Um, and it, was, it wasn't an expensive paint job. It's, it hasn't even been buffed yet, but it's just, you know, 
that was, I mean, you could spend $30,000 painting a car, you can spend $3,000 painting a car, you know, and that's, and that's really, and it still looks just as nice, you know. I don't think I've buffed any of the cars. <laughs> we haven't buffed any of our cars. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that either. I mean, and, and I, this one probably isn't going to be, um, yeah. just because it's, it's, it's a good driver car. Um, and that's and that's what he means to do like see this is like see that big joint that's something that's going away like that's see how big and bulky that is where the where the wishbone's mounted yeah i'll be putting on an early ford one instead to make it so that it just, show me what an early ford one looks like um it looks just like uh, does it look like that one there yep looks like that one there you go okay yep you see how this it's just simpler and it just kind of melts away you don't notice it as much smaller yep nicer yep and that's that's really so that's part of what I do. And the other part of what I do is like this car here. So this is a Survivor hot rod that was built in 1958 or 55, I guess. It's, there's a little bit of controversy because of we just found out we think this car was on Hot Rod Magazine. But um, either way, this, so this car will always look like this. Um, so what, basically I call it preservation where we take the car. So this car came to me. Um, it had a 302 Ford in it. It had a C6 automatic. But it was an original hot rod from back serious? in the day. Yeah. Wow. Um, and you can see underneath it still has hairpins. Someone had put hairpins. It has disc brakes. But so what we decided to do is it had this cool interior in it still. What era would the hairpins come in? Um, I mean, they had them back in the 50s. People were making them. I mean, one of my cars upstairs has them. But yeah. back in the 80s, it was really popular to buy. So, so would you get rid of them hairpins? No, nope, not in this car because okay. it's got full fenders. Okay. You can't see it. So, it's, and, so this is kind of like the best of both worlds. We're going to save the car the way that it is. But yeah, it does have disc brakes and it has you know better suspension under it. Um, but we'll we'll maintain it the way that it is, and overall the car is going to look like the early hot rod that it that it always was, and we'll just preserve it, and the customer's going to enjoy it for what it is. Are these original thirty-two Ford headlights? Yes. Yep. So that's what a thirty-two Ford headlight looks yep. like. I, I wouldn't know a thirty-two Ford headlight if I yeah they're pretty big. Okay, if big I fell over like... going to the washroom, I wouldn't know. Yep. So now I know they're kind of flat in the back. Right. And then this is, this is a dropped headlight bar. So it puts them down because originally these bars are pretty high. The headlights would have been up here. Okay. See so that swoops. That's just a cool trick that makes them look a little bit cooler. Um, so I don't know the stuff that you, that you know, obviously about what's going on here. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, that's from my restoration experience. Cause that's, you know, like I started out in a restoration shop. So I started to learn what parts, you know, and then these headlights look cool on, on a Model A too. That's funny how this is usually the generator there, is it not? Or like what's going, yep. on, what's going on there? They put an aftermarket generator on it? Nope. So basically because of the tri-power, there's no room for the generator. I so, got you. So I made this. This is actually a generator that's been cut down. So okay. this is a generator. This is the front of the generator. That's the back of the generator. Well, that was pretty good for me to know, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So um, this was an old race car trick they used to do because on a race car is back in the day, a lot of times they didn't run generators. So, but you still need your fan. Right. So they, they built these and I had one that I copied to make this and it still has the oil. You still oil the barons like it, you know, the little I've been oiling the one we have. Yep. Yeah. So you still oil it like you did. It's just, there's no generator body in between. Right. And what it does is it retains, see, it still mounts to the intake the, the right. same way. It still has the belt tensioner. This um, is quite a car. Like it's, yeah, it's a really cool car. It's got steelies on it. Like, that's quite a car. Is it not? And you put your, yourself a little list, what you're going to do every day or try to get done on the car. Not do, do it every day. It's Yeah, it's, it's try to, to try and keep track of where I'm at because yeah. you have all these going on. You have to be able to be like, okay, this car. So, and with, you know, with these guys working for me, plus I have my father-in-law works for me too and I have my friend Bill works for me. So I have all these people coming in. They, they're, they're retired guys, so they come in when they have time. Yeah. So they can come in here and they can go, okay, we got to do this, this, and this. And then it doesn't really matter it's pick a project and get it done so you know i'm not like we need to do this now it's all right this needs to be done if you have time today to do that let's do that yeah. and um and that way we can kind of keep everybody you know moving along um keeps things in order obviously right and like so you'll, you'll probably see this car in canada because he plans on driving it unless he lives in um he lives two hours north of toronto we won't see it but yeah, toronto will see it how far away is toronto from you? uh oh it 20 is? hours yeah oh we're that far yeah wow Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, we well, we're, we're, we flew quite a ways to get where we were going. Like you know what I mean? Like it's kind of not something that we. Yeah, that's right. Because Canada's a long country. So it is so. Yeah. yeah, we're quite a big space. Yep. Um, this is a frame table. We're yeah. building a, a model, a, another thirty-two frame for a race car for um, for pine tree actually. Um, and you for, try just you just nail it down before you start welding it up, basically. Yeah, it keeps it from warping. Yeah. Um, so. Isaac's been doing all the welding. Yeah, Isaac's been. Looks good, Isaac. 
And that, that car is a pine tree race car we need to finish before September. Are you serious? Yeah. So, but it's going to stay. All this is a shell. Isaac, get to work. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I am working on it. Yeah, 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 cool. yeah, yeah. He just put the motor in it a couple weeks ago. All yeah. right. Straighten the frame. The frame was all bent up in the front of it, hit. So. Still boxing to the frame. Yeah, he did boxing plates and. Um, right on. So that, so that one's that one's coming along. It's getting there. But getting there. We've got, and then there's other projects going on. This car here came in. Well um, done. Thanks. Well done. This one came in for chrome suspension and stuff like that. So we're doing, it has a chrome transmission. It has chrome hairpins. It has uh, chrome wishbones, chrome axle, chrome rear axle. So we're in the middle of doing that right now, um, swapping everything over. And this is a beautiful car. When in doubt, chrome it out. Chrome it out. Yeah. And chrome don't get you home, though. Yeah. The um, crazy. Yeah, it's got a crazy intake. It's an Alexander intake oh, with wow. two carburetors side that's by wicked. side. That's wicked. And she's getting chrome axle bells and. Well, that yeah, those is. Just... <laughs> got 63 plates with my name on it. What's the chances of that? Can your mom get those? 1963. No. Yeah. Oh, a friend of ours dropped them off yesterday. Oh, yeah. And this is the oddball in the shop right now. It's a C10, but um, kind of neat to be able to. It's got a crazy expensive Roger Shop chassis underneath it. Not really what I usually do, but um, it's kind of fun to be involved in it a little bit. Um, something different? Something different. I mean, yeah, it's. The janitor at my high school actually used to own this, and then he sold it to yeah. the guy that owns it now. Okay. Yeah. So, so I used to see this sitting around my town. <laughs> He's but, got two of those signs. What's that? Yeah, that one's a really good one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah some, some signs overflow into here. Actually, you see the big light up one over there? It's from a 1967 Toyota dealership. So, I mean, it's not, it can't be very many Toyota dealerships from 67 left. You know, the signs. There's not many cars left from 67. No, not Toyotas. Yeah. Um, oh, that's awesome. That's yeah, that's awesome. a um, Keystone toy. Yeah. Blimp. That's awesome. Goodyear Blimp. Get him to turn around for a minute, Jolene. You probably can't see it from that direction. That's cool. <laughs> he would notice. But can you see it? Oh, okay. I used to get him turned around because I could get it in my pocket. That's right. <laughs> you know, I'm known for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then obviously, I, collect, like, I have a weird collection of intakes. I just I like collecting flathead intakes. So I've got headlights. That is not, that is not, that's not a ridiculous weird. amount of them. That, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. They're kind of in every corner. There's a yeah. flathead intake stash somewhere. Um, but, but, you know, it's one of those things, too, if a customer comes in, and they want a, a really cool original intake, I probably you have probably it. got one. Yep. <laughs> so probably got a few. But yeah, I mean it's fun. I love what I do and you know, it's it's cool to be able to come out I here every day and, and and work on what I want to work on. So okay. but, and then in here's what we Notice, do. Notice sweep and clean your area every night. That does not happen. You yeah. try to. Absolutely not. In fact, I spent the entire day today as my work day cleaning for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> the truth comes out. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, we try to keep it clean. It's not always this clean, to be honest with you. Okay. So this is where we do, all, we, we make a lot of our That's parts and stuff in here. Um, it's, you know, still basic. I, I don't do um, computer generated or CAD stuff. It's all, everything I do is by hand. So um, a lot of old equipment is, you know, old riveting machines for doing like, you know, rivets on fenders and stuff like that. And, um, you know, slip rolls for making hoods, and I have a different slip roll on a press brake at the other end, and then that's my louver press, handmade. It's a hand pump. Yeah. You know, no, 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 me no crazy hydraulics here. You know, cool old like old grinder from like the 20s. It has the little oilers on it and stuff like that. It's driven by a belt. Yep. Good. Check out this belt. It's all riveted together. It's awesome. No, I like this better. I like the belt, but that's cool. What's that? <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's a friend of mine. It's here for uh, um, repair. <laughs> Are you serious? We yeah. Repair toys. Yeah, I repair toys. It's here for an axle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was sharing with Jolene when we were sitting outside. You guys were already in here. I was explaining to her what this space was this, back in the day. This was my shop. This was it. This is what I started with. Yep. So when I opened my business. You were fixing the miniature cars for people. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, so when I when I opened my business, the first day I opened my business, this was where I opened my shop. This was wow. it. Wow. Yeah. So that would be a Chrysler Airflow, is it not? It is. And the really cool thing is, so it's a Kingsbury toy, and Kingsbury's were made here in New Hampshire, in Keene, New Hampshire. So if you see Kingsbury toys, they're, they're actually fairly rare. Um, they're very well detailed. Like, that has working headlights and everything. It has a working taillight. Um, 
It's got one flat tire. Yeah, it's got one missing tire, and I got I got to locate one for it, and then I got to fix the axle, and I got to fix the license plate that's broken off. Um, Isn't that something? Yeah, we fixed a little bit. Of yep. There's <laughs> <laughs> so. your retirement plan. Yep. But you know, like I said, it's it's all basic basic tools. I mean, I we build all these. I said I, I pride myself on the fact we're building hand built cars as opposed to you know. Like I said, you can, you can type something into a computer and spit out parts, and there's nothing wrong with that. But for me personally, I like being able to make pieces, and that's what makes it art, because you, you know, there's little imperfections, and you know, when you're hand cutting out a bracket with a cutoff wheel, and then you polish it as best you can, um, that's kind of... Where you're at? Kind of where I'm at. Yep, me have some cool, like that's a brake lining reshaping machine right there, that red arbor. Yeah. So that's something that most people don't realize, but you take on an early Ford, for instance, if you take brand new brake shoes, they only hit on like a half an inch of it. So you take that machine and you take your brake drum off and then you shape your shoes and you put them in the, in the, um, in the actual drum. Now your shoes fit and they actually work. It gives you a really good brake. You're shoe. making a better brake. Making, making them actually work like they did originally. Because what's happened is over the years, the, the shape of the forms and the dies to make the shoes have changed, you know, if they've worn out or whatever. But that's actually a machine from the 20s. It has a cool, it's a little drill machine, so you can drill the rivets out. You push a button and it punches the rivets out. Cool. So, and I got that recently, that, that um, so that big machine, that's actually a press brake, a shear, and a, and a slip roll. The friend of mine owns a junkyard, he called me up two Thanksgivings ago. He's like, hey, you looking for a, you looking for a shear? He goes, someone just threw one away. And it's a right. five foot shear. It's a awesome machine. I haven't yeah, got a five foot shear. So awesome, Tom. Yeah, <laughs> it was not awesome on load. You're right. It was super heavy. So we, I appreciate you taking us through your shop because I know we're taking your day. No, it's fine. We're taking your day. No, no problem we're at all. Here now. That now, would you? So this was my first addition when I added onto my shop. Um, I added this on. So this car just came in. It, it's actually it'd be a pickup tomorrow. Um, it came in for a bad transmission. Um, we put high speed gears in the transmission and rear end. And then we lowered the back of it five inches, four inches in the front. So, how did you lower the front and how did you lower the back? So the front either dropped the axle and then I make my own reverse size springs here in the press. Um, and I can show you how to do it, it's wicked easy. Um, don't, don't ever buy reverse size springs because you can do it in about 10 minutes by yourself. Um, so we put, I put a reverse size spring in it, I dropped the axle, um, I changed the spindles because they needed to be able to um, clear, the, clear the dropped arms. Yeah. Um, and then I used different spring shackles in the back and made my own reverse eye. So, so, able... so if we wanted to drop the 48 back mm -hmm. out there, yep. so what would you do? I'd just reverse the eye on a spring and take out um, two main leaves. Because if you look at a 46 spring, you're going to have a stack of springs. You're going to have like 11 or 12 okay. springs. Take yeah. two of them out because you know if you... Does it matter which two? Two of the I, smaller ones, two of the I, bigger ones? I usually take out, I'll take like one, like two up from the bottom and I'll take out like two more up and take another one out. So it kind of relaxes the spring a little bit then flip the eyes around and the eyes are good for two inches by themselves flip the eyes around yep so um and i'll show you how i can show you how to do that and then um a trick people sell them you can buy them for like stupid money but a 41 ford spring shackle is an inch and a half longer than a regular 40 ford so what you do is you buy a 41 spring shackle and now you shackled it and you got an inch and a half more out of it and that's what i did on this car so if you look, I can put up on the left, you can see. So we did the skirts and stuff on it too. You put the skirts on it, you say? Yeah. It takes a while, but it gets there. Yeah. So if you come back here, so if you look at the you look at the spring, see see the longer see how long the shackles longer. Okay. And see how the eyes up the other way. Yeah. So that's all you do is you reverse the eye and put longer shackles on it, and then next thing you know you've got a car that's dropped way down. You can only go so far because you get frame interference. Right. So with we, dry we, shaft and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Eh? We brought this car down as far as we could, and we still have it doesn't bottom out. So. Um, and so that's what leaves are moved. You can see the car's still pretty stiff. Yeah. Um, it actually rides beautifully. It actually rides better now because it's not like a truck. So you've taken two uh, leaves? Two, two leaves, leaves out of this one, yep. And reverse the eye. Reverse the eyes, yep. And and put the 
the shackles from a from a 41 Ford. 41 Ford. Yeah, 41 Ford car. So now you're gonna show me how to reverse the eye? Yep. All right. I even, I even got a spring I can even show you with. Ooh, I'm getting old. <laughs> so, all right. So, okay, the eyes turning up. See how, yeah. see how the eyes turn down? Yeah. So what you do? Can you just okay? I can, I can show you. Just kind of give you a quick demonstration. It takes a while to do a big spring like this one, but no, nope, I want. Uh, yeah. Um. So what I do? I start about two inches from the end, and I'll mark off two inch increments all the way up. You got to stay away from the middle because if you press the middle, it'll crack the spring because it's already weak there. So what I do is I, I skip the middle like that yeah and i mark it out and then all you do is you you take you put the press on it yeah and you go i go um like 12 to 15 pumps on each one with the press and just keep moving up the spring and then so you're just reversing the then whole before spring. you know it the whole spring turns so the biggest trick to it is you lay it on the floor first before you do anything you lay it on the floor and you trace it okay so then once you start pressing it it starts taking its shape then you can bring it back to your template of your curve to make sure that your spring still curved the same way with so, the eyes changed the other way. Yeah, it just goes the other way. Yep. So, you know, like a Model A spring, like a front Model A spring, I can do in about 10 minutes on this press, just by hand. And I can flip it right around. And then um, a bigger spring like this will probably take an hour. But that's how you can make your own and not have to spend the money. Um, and like I said, you, you can buy reverse size springs, but they're a couple hundred bucks. And you, sometimes you can't, some models you can't actually buy them. You got to buy the whole pack with a reverse size. So you're spending three or $400. Right. Or you spend an hour and make your own for nothing. So, or your labor rate. And the, the other cool thing is you can also flatten it. You can make it less of an arc. So you can gain, you can actually take this spring and reverse it and then flatten it some too, so you're getting it even lower. And then- the I'm kind of wondering, if, if I put it, if you put it, if you turned it over and you put it in the car and then dropped it down on, would that change it? Put it in like this? Yeah. And then, and then drop the car down on top of that or you wouldn't get it far enough? I don't think or? it would go far enough. I think because okay. you got an arc, I think what happens, well, what would happen is your shackles couldn't handle the movement. I think they go straight or they bind okay. before it went the other way. Because you, you're changing in a significant amount. I mean, you're going from, from here to here. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's a foot in the, you know, in the realm of things. But um, You're just jacking a little bit each time? A little bit each time, yep. So you go, you know, you go through. Like, I can show and, you you're, and you're leaving the center out. And just skip the center. I mean, I can, I'll just demonstrate on one section real quick. Because like I said, this is just a junk spring. So um, let me bring the press up first. Mm. I could work here for a couple days. But again, it's it's that hand. It's it's the satisfaction of doing it yourself. You know what I mean? I mean, you, yeah, sure. You can go buy one and line somebody else's pocket, or have the satisfaction of knowing that you did it yourself. You know, and to me, that's that's key. Well, just the know-how. Right. The know-how is the greatest and, thing. And I taught myself how to do this, so. The know-how is the thing. So what you can actually, if me. you watch this, when I jack this spring, you'll actually see it change. And again, it's all hand. I'm no, I don't have any fancy equipment. This is just, this is like a... Well, a, you know what? You're the common day man that wants to know something. You know what I mean? It's not like... Right, and so this is this is like literally a yard sale $60 20-ton press. You know, it's nothing fancy. But once it starts taking tension, you'll see, see it's starting to load up the spring. Yeah. See the spring moving? Yeah. Oh, okay. So well, hickory dickory dock. Look at that now, would you? I knew that was going to happen. Will that stay like that? Will it have that memory though? It will. Yep. So okay. once, once you do it, what? Thirteen pumps. Yeah. What, yeah. So then once you, once you move down the spring, you go again. He's jacking as fast as he can, people. Yep. <laughs> You wouldn't want to jack it much more than that. No, you, I but, but what you do is you, you have to do it like two or three times through okay, the press. Okay, cool. A little bit at a time, because if you do it too much, you will break the spring. It needs that time to kind of relax and, you know. It's kind of a feel. I mean, you kind of feel it. You can, you can feel it taking tension. And awesome. You kind of know what it's doing. And then, huh. I mean, this should be a noticeable difference. I get it. But, I get it, yeah. But if you look sure. at the spring now. It's look going. At, look, look at the difference between there yeah. and here. Yeah. So you can see if you go through a few more times, the next thing you know, this is upside down. So, well done, Eli. Thank so you. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate that. 
So now you know how to lower cars. The well, I, I I know how you're doing it. Right. Um, um, but I'd have to do it to really know what I right. know. It. And it just it's, it takes practice. And the biggest thing is making that template so that you can keep that curve. That because what happens you. You don't want to put too much on one side and then, you know, and then not, not have the same. So if you have that curve on the ground, so whether it's the same shape or not, you can actually, you can kind of like. Basically, what I'm generally like anything, you want to do the same to one side as you're doing the other side. Right, right. And then if you have that arc, you can kind of see, okay, well, I'm a half an inch off on this side. Well, what if I make this side a half an inch lower too? So then you can you can make your adjustment. Right. Um, so, on the, so on the back, reversing the eye and changing the, the length of the shackle. Yep. Um, on the front of that 47 out there, what would you do with the front? So front, generally, I'll do a dropped axle on that. And those you usually have to buy because it's just... Oh, you're not popping them out with that? <laughs> no, I, I know someone that makes them. Yeah. But it's it's a process. Um, it's a bunch of work, isn't it? It's a ton of work and you got heat. You need to have huge, huge um, torches to be able to heat it yeah. that way. Um, it's, for me, the amount that I do, um, the just expense, buy just buy the axles because right. they're readily available. There, there is a point where... You can go backwards right. trying to make something, whether then you can buy something. There is a point, obviously. Yep. And then, yeah. like I said, like in the case of this car, I did a reverse eye on the front, but then I bought an axle. So, at so the you're end of doing the day, a, you're getting a little bit more out of it? Getting a little bit more, yep, with a reverse eye and a... I'm going to take a look, if you don't mind. Mm. Actually, you know what? I took the reverse eye back out of this car. Okay. Because we, we, we put a reverse eye in it, and it, was too low. it didn't have that 40s motorboat look that I wanted. Okay. So then we took a regular spring. What about you're talking lower in the back? Lower in the, the back like yeah. the 40s Customs had. Yeah. So um, so I opted to go back to the stock main leaf and then we removed a couple leaves to get the adjustment, to get it the way out. So it still sat low enough, but it sat tail down by about an inch. So yeah, that's why I forgot I took that one out. Yeah, because we put it. Yeah, we had it in there. It was slammed. Yeah, Grampy put it in. And you wouldn't believe the difference the reverse I made in this car. The, the wheels were like tucked, the rim was up under the fender. It made a huge, in this particular car, the way the geometry worked, it made a huge difference. And this year, of car is a 30? 30, 38. 38. And some cool stuff. This car came to me from, you know, another, someone else already done this, but they had filled this section of the grill. This is supposed to have grill up in here. It okay. back like that. So they this filled has been filled it. filled in? Yep. And then they had, then they louvered the hood. So this car is kind of a really neat, mild custom. And the cool thing was I've always, customs aren't, at least, at least here, they're not um, super popular. I've always wanted to do a 30s customer. I've never had a customer before that wanted to go with a tail down look. So it was really cool to be able to actually use, do that on this particular car and give it that. Oh, it's got the look, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's got the look. put on the skirts. Mm. I mean, it just, it kills it. I love the skirts on this car. Yeah. Yeah, it was skirts that I, so I, it was some skirts I had bought years ago. And I, I always tell myself, if the right customer comes along and the right car comes along, I'll, I'll, I'll let them go. And this They're was, getting it. And this was the right car for it, you know. That's where you collect the parts. Absolutely the right you know, car. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let it down. You know, and the cool thing is, I mean, the interior in this car is bone stock. It's a mohair interior, but it's just, it's still just a really cool overall car. And the, doing a high speed ring and pinion makes a huge difference in the way it, way it um, goes down the road, too. That's original? Yeah, or it's a reproduction of the original. Okay. You can take off a ride if you want. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and the reason being is, when's a, uh, nope. You gotta want one. <laughs> no, I, I, no, it's not that. It's just, you know, I'm, not, I'm just not. I learned a long time ago leave people stuff alone. It's all right to look that. at it. <laughs> just don't touch it. And it's a good piece of advice because um, when something breaks or something like that, then you obviously feel obligated to fix it. Yep. And if you don't feel obligated to fix it, you're not much of a person. Right. <laughs> and uh, I'd, I'd rather try to keep it. It's not mine. Right. Yeah. No, it's the good philosophy. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, I mean, it keeps you out of trouble. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know like I mean? the, oops. Like I, yeah, I've, I've done a couple things before, and it kind of taught me the lesson. Just, it's yours. You drive it, and I'll stay away. So a, so another interesting type of building here. So I have a, there's a 37 coupe in here that's a street rod, and the customer doesn't want it to be a street rod anymore. So it's like okay. all the billets. So we're going to turn this car into an original-looking car and get rid of all the new stuff. So, so this one's a 37? This is a 37 coupe. Yep. So it's a little bit different than that one. Um, it looks to be in really nice shape. It, it is, but you see, it was kind of a, you know, it's kind of a, um, a metallic, yeah. kind of burgundy color. It's kind of a '90s color. It was like popular. Just a wheel well in it. Yeah, no, it was, the car's in great shape. We put, we did put, have to put floors in it. Um, so this car will be made, taken back and made to look like more of an original car as opposed to what it is now. This is my engine storage. 
So more intakes, more just more of everything, eh? Yep. Well, that's so cool. The intake on the poly motor, the two. You're the first person that's actually known what that is. I've had some people. What is that? No, poly is a, such a weird motor. Yeah. Um, you know what they are, right? It's a, it's a half a Hemi. So that bottom is the same as a Hemi from the, the, the crank and everything and the, and the block itself. And then from the heads up, it's a poly. I think we have one, like in one in the old Plymouth that we got there. Oh, really? I think so. Yep. Yeah, they're, they're people, they're not like the most popular motor, but right. they're super cool looking. So I have a 34 Plymouth Coupe outside. It's going to be a hot rod someday and it's getting the poly motor. That's my... That's your dream? That's my dream. You know, in between working on the house and all the other cars. <laughs> But I always it's, say it's, it's dreams are free, so have as many as you like. Exactly, exactly. So we've got a, a changed. Yeah. Thing. So right now it's like a um, you know modern style, yeah. all the billet stuff. Um, so was this a running driving it car? Was. Yep. And he he wanted to change it. Yep. He wants to change it. Um, someone had already changed the chassis. They had started it, and then um, so that's when he decided to go, let's go a different direction. But again, this stuff was nice, but it doesn't have any soul. It's just parts. You know, it's, it's nothing special about it, in my in my opinion. Uh, so what we, we're probably going to do is we're going to get rid of the four-bolt valve covers and we'll put, like, original Chevy script, like, you know, 50s or 60s valve covers on it. Yeah, it's give um, it like it was a built back in the day. Right. We'll still retain the internals of the modern motor, um, but we'll get rid of all the AC stuff. If we do, it'll be hidden. I bought some um, Oldsmobile. Oh, fa the Oldsmobile yeah. covers? The, yeah, yeah, the full full cover, yeah. Yep. And the reason being is because I want it to look the way I want it to look. Right. You know, and it's, it, it is what it is. Yep. Yeah, and that's and that's that's really what it's at. You know, it's make it your own, make it special. You yeah. know, that's my opinion. I, I always, you know, you, anybody can buy anything, um, but to to be able to make small, it doesn't have to be everything. I mean, just make make a few small parts that make it you know interesting and and um, and that's kind of kind of where I come from. That's my school of thought, and it's I think it comes from. You know, me growing up, never having the money to do it. I had to, if I wanted, I had to make it. You know, I, I couldn't go out and buy parts. I couldn't go through the parts catalog. Oh, I want this. You know, I've been doing this since I was, you know, 15 years old. And you know, back then, you know, working at a general store doesn't doesn't buy you all kinds of fancy stuff. Well, I tell you, you're inspiring a lot of people. Watch, seeing what you're doing. You know, to they can do it too. Obviously, I mean that that's the way you have to look at it. Yeah. If you've you know taken your passion and you're building hot rods and uh, making things for them you're obviously yeah and that's that's cool. just it i mean it's 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 make it your own make it special make it make it a piece of artwork that's the way i always look at it i mean and the thing is like you just said anybody's capable of it i mean if you get the will and the want if you get the will and the want absolutely i mean you and the, the thing is i mean you saw what i have for equipment it's nothing fancy you know yeah. and i've upgraded it i mean i i've had you know much simpler stuff but it's it's all just you know what stuff is available to me and you know I'm going to reverse, reverse the spring now. Yeah. You, you, you have a press at home? Well, um, probably not. But, but you can buy one. Like I said, they're not that expensive. I'm so. going to bang it on the ground. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I use that technique, by the way. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? I, I, use, I do that. I've done it several times. Yeah. It works. It, it doesn't matter. I don't care what anybody says. That technique works. So It works. Bang it on the ground, right? Yep. And just you know, shape it that way. But, but Man, what a beautiful day. Yeah. You know, it is a great day. Yeah, it's a beautiful day. But, you know, again, you know, I built my own shop and, you know, and that's, this is what I want to do. And the only way to do yeah. it is build my own shop. So, yeah, I like the idea of, uh, like the idea of the lowering thing. You've got a bunch of plaques up there, the trucks that you, cars that you, are yours and that you've done, obviously. Those are all, those are all magazine articles. Okay. Yeah. So those, some of them are mine, some of them are customers. This is another one up here. Like, um, so this was the, when I first opened, I did this F100, um, which was a really big project um and it was uh that was four years to build that truck wow um it's the only truck when class when the magazines were around of course most of them aren't around anymore it was the only truck that's I really, a shame you know that it is i enjoyed the magazines i like, I like opening up and, and the reason being is because you can look at that car you know i mean i suppose you can look on the computer every time you want to too but right but it's not the same it's it's not because you can go through that magazine you're basically looking at all the cars and you can pick and choose what you like and what you don't like and what you like about each one and what you don't like about and each you can kind of earmark it and set it aside if you yeah. want yeah exactly um and this is the story of the car the him and roadster upstairs all the 
and he, like we were talking about the original photograph. So when he was 11 and he wanted to build a road, so this is a picture of him standing next to the first hot rod you ever saw in California. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, this purple one is actually a local car. It was I? So it's, in a way, it's kind of the car. I kind of designate as a car that got me hooked on hot rods. It was on the way to my elementary school, parked in a garage. And one day I saw it outside and I was like, wow. And so I got to actually make the car run again uh, about 10 years ago. The family contacted me and says, hey, would you, can you get this car fixed and make it run and drive again? So we did. We, we preserved it. The same thing. It was a real rough East Coast style, basically just a shell. And um, we, East Coast liked the channel, didn't they? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, channel and no chop. Channel and no chop. And channeled hard. That car is, again, that's like a 12 inch channel. But you see his original picture of it up there. Yeah. And um, the really interesting thing was, is the guy had had a brain um, injury and he hadn't spoken in years. And literally like 10 years he hadn't talked. So, but his wife still talked to him every day. And when I went to pick the car up, she goes, oh, Eli's here, he's gonna pick up your car, he's gonna make it run again. He sat up and he goes, no! And she's like, wow. And so that car meant that much to him that he was in this comatose state that he actually came out of it for a second. And, and went right back to it again. It was like, and that was, a, that was the last time he had spoken. Was it no, he was happy, or no, don't touch it? <laughs> I, I think it was no, don't take it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, since she's like, Tom, no, she's no, no, John, it's coming back to you. It's coming back to you. Uh, but I think he thought I was actually taking it. And because um, he was in the window watching it, you know, he's, he was in a wheelchair. He, he couldn't walk. He couldn't do anything. And it was amazing to see that kind of a reaction. And it's just an awesome story, you know? Yeah. Um, do you have you have something to do with this one? That was my car in high school. That was your car in high school. Yep. Um, so I bought it uh, right at the end of my senior year, and then that's the car I actually learned how to do what I do on. Um, I took a job at a body shop as a floor as an apprentice floor sweeper, and they let me work on that at night, and then basically taught me how to do body work and straighten panels and paint. And um, so I owned that car up until what 2018. I met Lisa in it. We picked up, you know, our kids travel all over the country in it. You met me in it? Yeah, I met her in it. <laughs> um, I was just telling Jolene the story inside. So. Eli was a blind date, and he picked me up in that 55 Ford. He's pretty good. He could drive that car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so, I mean, that, that was, and it started out, I mean, that was a, I started out as a bone stock restoration. That's how I learned, yeah. you know, and then I, then I learned how to do welding. I learned how to shave the door handles and the emblems and made my own tube grill for it and, um, and then, yeah, awesome. so it was kind of cool. And I drove it cross country when I was 21 to see if this is where I wanted to stay or not. So that was kind of cool thing to do. But yeah, so it's, it's, you know, it's a lifelong, it's a lifelong passion. So I'm trying to, you know, spread the wealth around with the kids and everybody too. So. Well, it so. looks like you're doing a great job. Well, thanks. Fantastic. I'm impressed with the shop. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. You don't know until you see. Look like it's there, does it? You don't know until yeah. you see, right? And I, see, I don't. I don't advertise either. It's all social media, and you know, like I said, my customers come from all over the world, and that's all just because I, you know, what is it? It's kind of like it's a genre. It's a certain niche, and the people that like that follow. Yeah, that. not everybody wants a flathead. Yeah. Exactly. Or, yep. Or or, or yeah. car like this. Hmm. But then the word of mouth spreads around. Hey, this guy's doing this type of car, and then the next thing you know, you you're busy. So, um, you know, it's. You know, and again, I, I'm able to narrow it down to the cars that I want to work on. Which and you're basically doing, are you, are you doing paint? Obviously, you got a yep. paint room there. Do, yep. So you're doing paint? Yep. You're doing mechanical? Yep. You're doing welding? Yep, we do. Framework? Yep. We do body, every, like everything doing, but yeah. actually stitching seats. I can I can do seat covers, but I don't know how to sew, so. <laughs> I fall short right there. But, Damn um, it. But no, we do, I do wiring. We do, we do everything right here in the shop too. We don't sub anything out. So every, when a customer brings a car here, it's a one-stop deal. We can do everything for them. So but that's why I was able to like the fenders, you know, we were able to paint the skirts and then this is a really funky color. We couldn't get really get a good match. So I ended up painting the rear fenders too and blending them to make them all match together. Um, oh, wow. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's a, it, we're able to do everything and, and the, I'm, that's I'm, a nice thing when you can go somewhere and take something and get all that stuff done instead of run it here, run it there, run it here, run it there. Right. Uh, you only have one person to blame. Right. And it, that's what you're doing. I mean, you're, you're, all your cars are start to finish, right? You're, you're Basically. Doing, you're doing your paint and your metal work. And or it doesn't get finished. Right. <laughs> right. 
I have some of those, man. I got I got a whole bunch of projects. I'll bag lined up like cordwood, waiting to come in there for unfinished projects. It's like Jim told me. If if it's out in the other shop, um, it, it's not uh, it's not on the list, not being finished. It's not ready to become back in yet. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just on hold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes that hold could be ten years. Who knows? And, and I like listening to Jim sometimes because no, most of the time actually because he, he talks a lot of sense and it is what it is. Right. Right. Well, it took us what nine years to build my roadster. Uh, seven, but yeah. Seven, okay. Yeah, and the thing is with her car is like we. we and just you're you're not talking seven years full time. You're talking seven yeah. years off and on, a couple weeks here and a couple it's weeks there. Yeah. So it, basically, what it was is the way I build my own cars to keep it affordable is I have a car in mind and I just start hoarding parts for it. So it's like okay, oh, I came across a transmission today. That will yeah. go with that car. Oh, here's the oh, here's the wheels. Here's some good tires. So yeah. I start yeah. collecting it, and then like my drag difference, I own that for like twelve years. And I needed very specific dragster parts. Yeah, I could have gone through a catalog and bought a bunch of stuff, but I just waited for the right original stuff to come along. And once I got to a point, I'm like, okay, I've got 95% of it. Now I can throw it. a car together. Yeah. And yeah. then that way, you're not into it for stupid money because like, you're able to find the good deals. You wait till a trade deal comes. I mean, my, my slicks and magnesium wheels were a trade. I had a Y-block engine someone wanted, and he had the slicks. And, he, and I was like, it's a lopsided trade. He goes, no, I really want the Y-block. I'm like, oh, I really want the slicks and the magnesium wheels. Yeah. And so. that's sometimes what ruins a project is the money the money when you get when you get over too far and above in your project yep. it yep. really ruins the the, the fun the fun of the pro of the of the situation right and and if you can some people understand it and some people don't you sometimes you have to go through it right but the money does mean something when you're making something because right. you know unless you're you don't give a shit well you don't give a shit but if you're trying to build a hot rod and have fun with it once you get over and above what you're happy with right then you're not happy with it no more right i mean i'll be honest with you i can't afford most of the cars i build my customers awesome you know <laughs> i just i just can't i mean i can't afford the parts yeah awesome you know? so but that's why i build what i build for myself you know with what i with what my means are. that's that's who, what makes you who you are right exactly yeah. you know, and, I, and i don't need to i don't need to i don't even go to car shows i just i i enjoy i build for me to, as as a it's an outlet for me and it's it's well you're to be enjoyment. honest with you i i see a a lifestyle more so more so than a car show right you know what i mean there's a different thing going on car showing is you know talking and getting along with people and all that sort of stuff taking your car and having a good time a lifestyle is living it yep. um building something that's a passion that you want to drive and have fun with and uh, there's two different things going on there is and we we absolutely love i mean we drive the wheels off our cars <laughs> i mean yeah. instead of going to a car show what i like to do is i mean we'll we'll go out on a weekend we'll we'll drive and find a, a bed and breakfast or a hotel somewhere and we'll drive you know some of our friends are like we just drove for 17 hours like yep that's the fun you know you could go to a car show and sit there for yeah. 10 or you can go and you know experience stuff you get to see like go out to the coast go to the ocean go check out lighthouses whatever there was a video of you i think you or you driving the little truck on a dirt road you guys were driving dirt road that looked like so much fun oh yeah and yeah well, was a, a, that was last fall we did a I'm not sure which one it, it was, was it, it was just a video i seen yeah. i don't know where i seen it i must have been scrolling or jolene yeah, showed me and it was just you me. driving the dirt the truck on the dirt road just giving her it just yeah. looked like so much fun man <laughs> like yeah, and we and we've we've found a bunch of like-minded oh, people too that will talking about was it the hot rod hill climb maybe um, oh, yeah, it yeah, might yeah. have been, but I just yeah. know I've seen your truck burning yeah. down the dirt yeah, road. We, and we've never before. driven the truck on the yeah. road, so yeah. it, hasn't right. been, <laughs> yeah. it hasn't been the hill climb or us drag racing up the hill. Yeah, because yeah. so there's, there we, was actually turn the corner going up a hill, I think. That's, yeah, yeah. That hill, climb. hill climb. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah our friend, yeah, our friend was, Alan Johnson puts that on. Yeah. It's, it's literally yeah. like a sand pit and it goes up this yeah. wicked steep mountain road and it's all, it's crazy. There's no guardrails or anything. It's so cool. It's awesome. Awesome. But it, again, it's we found a bunch of like-minded people too that you know we call them up and say, hey, you want to go for a ride this weekend? Yeah. Sure. So we'll get together and we'll get five or six cars and we'll just drive. You know. Yeah. Sometimes and, it's, and it's nice too, where the cars are not, like you know. I mean, this is nice. I mean, let's face it. It's not perfect, but yeah. But um, where the ego's not involved. Correct. Yeah. And and when you're got a hot rod like you're building, like some like your son's your truck there, and, and you like Jolene's little race car, the ego's not involved. Who's got the best? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's kind of nice to be able to cruise best. with everybody, and and the ego's left behind because you're just right. having fun in the hot rod that you have. Right. When you start car showing, sometimes the ego gets gets involved. Yep. And uh, my car's better than yours. I spent more money than you did, and um, whatever. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, no, absolutely. When the ego's I, I not got, involved, I got there's more fun. Older, fancier parts than you. Like, I don't care about that. Yeah, exactly. Like it's. Yeah. 
it, it's like the same like the horsepower race. I, I taught people, I taught myself out of work a lot because it's like, I was like, oh, I want to build this crazy motor. Why? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, I hate, I hate to say it, say it that way. It's like, you've got all these other things you could do to your car that make it function better, work better, drive better. Um, and you want to spend X, Y, Z amount of money on, on an engine. So for what? So you can tell everybody that you have 2000 horsepower. Cause at the end of, what are you going to do with it? Cause at the end of the day, we can only drive where we can drive. So I always, my, my thing is, I always ask my customers, what do you want? Do you want to race your car or do you want to drive your car? Because what happens a lot of times you get into, um, you know, high horsepower stuff, your, your reliability goes out the window. So if you are the person that wants to drive like we do, keep it simple, man, because you want, you want that reliability. It's like that, you know, you're, you're 46 out there. Yeah. That car's reliable. You just drove it, you know, 1,500 miles or whatever, because that car's basically stock. And, you know, and that's what makes that car reliable. You've been just dumping a little bit of oil in yep, it. Yep, a little bit of oil here and there, yeah, you know. Yeah, checking the oil. What did you say? Feed and bleed. <laughs> it feeds and bleeds. It bleeds a little bit of oil, and we feed a little bit of oil. Yep. And, and, and you know, it's, it's a different philosophy, but, you know, at the, at the end of the day, it's, I try to, try to talk people off from that ledge. It's like, let's make the car look awesome. Let's lower it, and let's give it that, and let's make it reliable. So every time you push the starter button, it starts. You know, and you're not, yeah, and you got, I mean, <laughs> I, had, I had a huge motor in my 32 at one point, and it was undrivable. It wasn't funny. Pulled to a stop sign. I think car, car's doing this. <laughs> and yeah, it sounded awesome. It sounded badass. I get it. But at the end of the day, I took that motor out, put a nice tame motor in it, and now I can just. Did you uh, see the guy that was the in uh, BC that had the two door that whacked into the side oh of the track God. trailer? Oh, my God. Did you see where his head was? Yeah. He went from the driver's seat to I the guess back he walked passenger. away from that. Uh, he was the backseat driver. Yeah, so. back, back window I driver. He did, he was very lucky. His bell got rung, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah that was bad. Yeah. We actually but, but, sent it to these two as yeah, a reminder. Of, where like, you if you want to do that stuff, go to the racetrack and you can do it all you want. If you want to do burnouts, yeah. go to the racetrack. Or back row. Uh, no. Oh, no, not the back road. <laughs> oh, boy! <laughs> <laughs> but, um... <laughs> But no, I mean, it's just like, there's, there's a place to do it and there's a time to do it. And um, obviously you get, that was someone with too much horsepower that was showing off and look what happened, you know, and now they don't have yeah. a car. And luckily they, luckily they lived it. Yeah, but. really. Like, yeah, I did notice his head out the back window, right? Yeah, I had, I was I like, I his, zoomed in. I'm like, wow. His, his seat moved, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> the seat belt didn't do what it was supposed to do if he had one on. Yeah. That's, that's too bad. I, I, yeah. But. That's the best thing that he's probably still going, but. Right. Um, right. His ego probably. Yeah, it's pretty embarrassing once you do that. Yeah. <laughs> there's no coming back. Yeah, and it was on. It was actually a bunch. Of, there's actually a bunch of different videos from different angles. So like, you know, there was like 15 people that caught that yeah. from different directions. Yeah, so, that's not that's not a good thing. But yep. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh. Yeah. Play safe. Yep. <laughs> You're not as strong. You can't put your arm but, back on. But like I said, I mean, it's a, it's all about it's it's all what everybody likes too. I mean, I build cars for for customers, and you know, and I. I try to steer them in a direction that I think, A, is going to make the car reliable, but also, at the end of the day, also something they can recover their money back out of, or come close. You know, lot, most of the times you're upside down. Some people think of that, and some people don't. Yeah, see, I always like to... You're that kind of guy. I can tell that just the way, just by the way you, the things you collect, right. the, the way you talk, right. um, the way you're doing things. I can tell that you're sort of somewhat like I am, like you, money means something, right. and you just don't throw it away. You try to um, make it more... Or yep. you try to, you know, have something that you can get more out of. Like basically, I, it's a lifestyle to spend your money that way. It is. And, and like they always say, a fool and their money soon part. Yeah. And I've been known to be a fool. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes it's nice to, you know, buy things, collect things, save things, make things that you can do on your own instead of just shelling over that money. Right. Right. I mean, I wouldn't be, I mean, I, I couldn't have all the stuff i have you just shelling money out wouldn't happen yeah. i mean it's it's and the thing is it it's actually kind of fun it, it makes it it does it, it makes it you know it, it it's it's like you you come up with a means to make it happen if there's something you really want and so I just go oh I'll go to my bank i'm like buy this thing you're like all right what can i sell or trade yeah exactly. that's the stuff that goes through my head it's like okay i really don't like to get rid of my signs is it worth giving up a sign for this you know i mean it's, it, that's that's kind of the way that that i am you know it's you know, and I and I carry that over, like we just said, over to my customers too. I, I look out for their bottom line. I just don't want to throw their money at me. You know, I want it to be something that they're happy with and that they can enjoy, and that you know, at the end of the day, that, that they're okay with paying what they paid too. You know, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's like, a lifestyle. It certainly is. Yeah. So. But what's the bamboo for? You're not using them as welding sticks, are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, nope, is nope. he just doing something I don't know? Those are, I just I those like, those are for marking off the grass. Those are line weight, like, yeah, uh, lawn delineators. Those are my peonies. 
<laughs> That's a yep. switch for the boys. Get yep. to work. Do the right well, thing. But yeah, so I mean, it's, you know, we have fun and we were able to do what we can do. And let's just take a walk around the door and we'll show that El Camino. I'll show you stuff out back yeah. too. There's some, there's okay. some project cars oh. out back. We'll follow you. I don't know if we want to see out back. <laughs> well, we're all messy. Hey. What do you mean? <laughs> hey, what? this is pretty cool. So I got this gas pump with no doors. Okay. From a paint tank. Junkyard. It's it's a it's a propane tank from a gas grill. There you go. And it, it's the exact. I mean, how close is that? <laughs> it's the it exact, fits. Yep, it fits. It works. That's cool. You would never know unless you said. You yep. know. So this is where the projects hide. Yeah, we got 63 F100 in there. Oh wow! So Look this is that, a so this is a 33 Plymouth that I found in the woods. Believe it or not. Are you serious? Yeah, I found. You just still a, find that stuff around yeah, here? Yeah, I found it in the woods. What two years, three years ago? Yeah, we actually towed it home with that 63. And it has it has an Oldsmobile rear. Those slicks were on it with the reverse wheels. It's been chopped. And the crazy thing is, it had a flathead Ford engine in it. And the transmission that was in it is in their truck. Yeah, we found it. It was full of dirt. See, I, I like I like that. Like, I mean, I like a 32 and 33 Ford, but I like... It's just as nice of a car. Yeah, I think so, and too. Like, yeah, I really do. So a 33 Ford is $30,000, $25,000 yeah. in this condition. This is $2,500 in that condition, and it looks pretty much the same. Um, yeah, Plymouths are a really good-looking car. They have the same same type of grill. See, See that it, turns me on. Yeah, it's, it's a cool car. Yeah, it is a cool car. Yeah. Um, you know, someone filled the roof at some point. You know what they say, boys? It gives me a chubby. Yeah. <laughs> And then there's, uh, I got a roadster project back there. It's super rough, yeah. but it's one of those ones that I just want to see if I can fix it. I'm just trying to chalk their licorice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? They understand. <laughs> this was an old custom truck I bought yeah. last year. The hood flips to the side, and they filled all the seams. You can tell it was candy apple red at one point. It's got a big block in it. Um, Volari front clip with disc brake. Yep. Um, and then this is Alden's 32 yeah, projects that he's... Pretty cool engine for it. I found a yeah. 312 Y block online, and I we ended up looking at the stamps, and the guy told us it was a uses a backup generator for a school's air raid siren. Okay. So I call it the air raid 32. Is that? It has 200 hours on it. It I literally mean, it ran on propane. It was regularly Be clean. Yeah, it was super clean. It's it like was brain. regularly maintained by the government. They had to come in and change the oil in it every so. We found a body that um, they are very clean. The propane engines, eh? Like, yeah, it's got a weird engine. So, so this car has a really bad roof. Yeah. We have another body that has a really good roof but a bad bottom. So we get we're gonna cut the car in half and. Is this an original chassis? It or? is. Wow. Yeah, that is, that is an original 32 frame. I had, someone saw that Isaac and I were building a truck, and he called me up and said to come down oh, and I get this frame. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. It's probably one of the nicest 32 frames I've ever seen. We got we sold our little tractor. Oh, you did? Yeah, I was hey, I, you having problems I was with rolling over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, a couple we, times. But there was a guy that messaged me and said, "Do you want to sell that?" And I said, "Yeah, we will." This is Isaac's sixth, seventh, seventh birthday. Seventh birthday. Present. Yeah, we got a tractor for his birthday. Like That's where we roll. Work. Will it pick up an engine? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. This 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 thing is this thing's really strong. It's, it's a 1984 Power King. Um, it actually has a has a real rear axle in it and everything. Yeah. It's actually a really really stout little tractor. But um, you have another one over here. That yeah, that one's um, I just sold that to a customer in Canada actually. Um, but the interesting thing is is he brought it here. Four different customers owned it, and he came here. This guy owns a red car, and he came here. He goes, he goes, you know, my biggest regret in my life. I said, what's that? He goes, selling that 33 three window. He goes, do you know where it went? I said, it's out in the snow banking. And he's like, no. <laughs> I'm like, it's still here. He goes, is it for sale? I'm like, yep. So he ended up he ended up buying it back. So now I get to build it into a into a hot rod. We're gonna leave it all patinaed like that. It's actually a pretty nice body for a 33. So and my, my neighbor has that car that's kind of weird. It's a 27 Nash. It's it's one of those like relative middle cars with the driver sat separate. Yeah. On the roof, yeah. So cool. He says I'm gonna own that soon. <laughs> Can't say it's a but is the Plymouth for sale? No, that's my. That's the one I want to put the poly motor in. Okay, that's my. I, I don't blame you a bit. That's my um, kind of my dream deal. It is, but it's cool.
But yeah, it's you know people have given me like a friend of mine gave, gave me the windshield frame for the missing. Yeah. Um, another friend of mine gave me some extra doors and all the garnish moldings that were missing. So I'm, again, I always say I collect parts. I've had this car about three years now, and I'm just I'm in that process. I am going to do it with the seat frame because I don't like that. <laughs> There's always something we yeah. don't like or so, we do like. You know? Yeah. So it has a Ford front end in it too, which is see so it has that step. Oh, this one doesn't. Yeah. Stay. But it has the spring and front Ford front end in it. So it's a bunch of really weird. So stuff. instead of lowering the front, they just eat the frame to yep. lower the. Yep. Oh, I've done that before. And then they kind of built, and then they built it off the back of the front cross, which is a bunch of really kind of interesting stuff they did. Um, they were just going a different, a different way to get what they wanted. They, they were doing what they probably with what their means were, you know. I don't know when that. There's no history on this car. What? What a small. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. See the cool thing. See the hoods on the plumes come up over. So a Ford, the firewall comes down like this. Yeah. So you so this car has tons of room up underneath the dash. I mean, all this is under the dash. So, I mean, you see, it's, it's a pretty good. believe that the doors still open like that. Yeah, and even the, even the windows work. Jeez. So. Right on. But they chopped it, so that's how much it was chopped. See, these, this won't go up any further. You can see where, the, where they landed it. Yeah. You can see where they cut it here. And you can see where they buckled the roof of these. They pulled the nose of the roof down. Gee, that so. shot's good. Yeah, it even has good gaps. Yeah. So. Good find. Yeah. Was, the cool thing was, is it had trees growing up through it. And I had people online go, oh, you faked it. I'm like, I didn't fake it. <laughs> I found it in the friggin' woods, you faked know? It. And That's you know, an orgasm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, faked it. So, yeah, we, me and the kids, we went there, and a guy brought a tractor down, and we literally took it out of the woods, and it was tree. I mean, there was trees growing up through the windows, you know? And um, little little saplings. You faked it. Yeah, yeah. I planted trees in <laughs> it just for so, just like so you go on the internet. Who would say something like that? Crazy to hit. In here is my truck. You got you got something in here? Tucked yeah. away. Nope. Oh, look at that now, would you? Cool. Yeah. So this was actually Dad's best friend. He he passed away. Short box. Yep. yep. We uh, we traded it for a Scotty camper, and then we painted it blue. I love the blue. I mean, it's a great color. It's Academy blue. I like blue too. Yeah, it's I, the original blue too. Yeah, it's a great. Uh, the dash inside is the same color. I like it's a the faded, off. The, the is it yellow or is it a white? I like a, that like together. A, I yeah, know. like a cano it's cannoli. Like a, it's like a cannoli. Yeah. Cannoli color. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Uh, it's a two-two-three in line six with a three-speed on the floor. So I don't. I don't mind it at all. It's fun. That's cool it's fuel shit. efficient. I, yeah. Tow it's with cool. it. It gets the job done. Ooh, the drag still looks awesome behind it. Yeah. Awesome. That's actually we towed that. Okay. Look, he's got nice signs everywhere. Telephone. You could knock somebody out with that sign. I think this one, huh? A building settling. There it goes. The wagon, did you buy the wagon off Lindsay? No. No, he has one similar though. You had one. Yeah, did, you didn't, okay. No, I bought that one. We bought that a long time ago. We bought it in 2009. Yeah, it was um, wow. the car was actually it was, it was dark green. <laughs> Even metallic. Paul says, "Wow." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I just can't believe it was that long ago. Yeah. It was dark green yeah. metallic it was and so long. it actually it, it actually had awesome patina. And honestly, knowing what I know now, I wouldn't have stripped that with the way it was because yeah. it had like that perfectly worn tops of the fenders. You know, the primer was just showing through. I'm like, oh no, it's gross. We got to strip it down. And it's like we added a ton of work we really didn't have to do. We've had so much fun with it, with the boys now. We wish we had done it when they were younger. Yeah, because the 55 was a two-door. <laughs> yeah, we I mean, things, we, so we brought that to Pine Tree last year. Yeah. And, um, the cool thing was that some guys oh, from Canada right. came down. They brought an American wagon. That's actually a Canadian wagon. It has the, um, mm -hmm. it's a nine passengers. The, re the rear seat flips up into a forward-facing third row, three-person seat. Um, so it's called a Beauville. Yeah, that's cool. So we had the Canadian wagon, wagon and the American wagon. Well, you're cool. My wagon. Yeah. <laughs> now it's just dump the front end way down hard by cutting the coils off and yeah. <laughs> have fun with it. It's just funny. We have a running joke because the kids take it all the time. He takes it all the time. So I said to him, I'm like, what are you supposed to say when somebody has you in, when you have, says you have a nice car? Yeah, it's my mom's. It's my mom's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've been trained, my friend. You've been trained. It's mom's. It's mom's. It's, mom's. it's, mom's. it's, mom's. it's not mine. It's mom's. So. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make you feel good? Or? <laughs> <laughs> it's my it's mommy's. You put your you put your head down when you say it. It's my mom's. Yeah, it's my mom's. Yeah. 
kick your feet around a little bit. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my mom. Yeah, it's yeah. actually my mom. <laughs> but um, cool. Yeah. What about the Chevy truck? That just gets, so I haven't been running like 12 years. They brought Alden actually. So this was Alden's first um, project for himself. So it came in as a non-runner and his deal was to, to make it run. So we get. Um, you need lines. Truck just sitting there, like it, it's perfect. It, it came in, it was covered. You couldn't even, you almost not even tell what color it was been. Iron saw it was just like brown. Are you serious? Yeah, so they brought it, came out on a ramp truck, and, and it's you actually you young fellas living the dream, man. Some, working on all this stuff, man. It's cool. It, it started and it was ticking like crazy and smoking, and then um, we some Lucas heavyweight fixed that. Yeah, we took it, we took it for a trip around. It was a three so mile loop we can do Lucas, right here. We did a three mile loop. Yeah. My team came back, <laughs> it was quiet, it wasn't smoking, they're imperfect. <laughs> it just needed to be driven, that's all. I mean, every car in our thing has Lucas in it. That, that Lucas heavyweight does it. I yeah. Know, it, it, it stopped this thing from smoking. It's like an so infomercial for Lucas. Me. Just talk to Alden. Like, what's that up like Lucas right heavyweight. <laughs> yeah, it's Lucas, uh, heavyweight. Lucas oil uh, treatment. They call okay. It. We was given an oil treatment in Ontario from a man. I don't know what it was called, but we haven't we haven't stuck it in there yet. We haven't had any problems, so we. I don't want to cause any. You don't want. Either. You don't want to risk I, there's it. There's no sense putting anything in it if it's working good. Like, like you said, Leave don't fix it. Alone. Yep. If it's not, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a cool old truck. Yeah, and it's then, got a. Yep. And the El Camino is pretty neat too. Low. Yeah. Did you see the interior in this? Yeah, it's fun. Check this out. I think it looks like a strawberry. So, you have to like look at. The headliner and everything to get the full effect, but how crazy is that? <laughs> Nothing better than a ripe strawberry, though. <laughs> yeah. Is the Ford grad sign like fat, like an old one? No, it's well, it's old now. Yeah. Um, no, I bought that uh, quite a few years ago, and then I broke the neon. Oh. That broke my heart. I, um, it was a full-on mantrum. Yeah, it was a mantrum. That was a mantrum day. <laughs> Yeah, I hit it with a ladder in our old house. I was moving something around. I hit it with a step ladder, and that was. So then I was like, "Well, it's okay. It can be an outside sign now. <laughs> it's it's a reproduction, but it looks cool. It's, a, it's actually a perfect place for it. It's actually looking good right now, the present yep. moment. Right. Yeah. Give me seven hundred for it. Yeah, with the broken the broken neon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no one knows how old it is, but us. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's all all fun stuff, you know. Awesome. The Sunuka pump. That looks cool. I yeah, can actually say I love so this cool. place. So I have all. So I, you have a bunch of pumps at home. So what? You no, know the, not a bunch. Just okay. a couple. So you know the trick to keeping. Like, so what that is? See the solar panel. They're um, walkway lights for solar walkway. Okay. And that, they'll stay on all night, and it shuts hmm. itself off. Yep. So each, each of the pumps have a little solar. The, the Golf one does too. Each have a little solar panels. You can see the other one. See the solar panel on the red one. On I the, can't see on it. On the up pipe, so just just to the right below the globe, there's a little square. Okay. That's a solar panel, so it's right know, on. Keep, keeps the pump lit keeps, up. Keeps them lit up, and it doesn't cost you anything. Right on. So, and you can well done. put them wherever you want. So, yeah, I'm in the middle of doing a barn siding too, which is there's always there's always projects. We're always doing something here. Already. Yeah, there's never a weekend off. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. You know why? <laughs> Idle hands keeps is devil's us Well, like I said, build it ourselves too. Yeah. You know, you had the pride of building. You know. Yeah, sure, I could have paid someone to do it, but you know what? I actually kind of like doing it. It's something different. Yeah. And um, get out there and bang some nails for a while and and uh, have the satisfaction when I'm done that I did it. So There you go. I did it. I think there's a steering column in it called I Did It. There is. There is. I did it. Yep. Yep. So. All right, everybody. I'm going to sign off. I want to thank Eli and his family for showing us around. It's been fan fantastic i really i really enjoyed it because i got to see a bunch of stuff that inspired me and a lot of people say oh i'm jealous well i'm not jealous one bit i'm inspired that's right to so we should be to do the exact same thing or collect that sort of stuff so when i get home i'm going to be looking for signs and i'm going to be <laughs> going, going <laughs> well, you for, get some pretty good ones up there you know going for a hot rod or whatever but i'm inspired and uh like share comment um you can go on eli's my Instagram. Uh, it's Instagram or something like yeah. that. Check it out. Pine Tree Jamboree is? Uh, September 15th, 16th, and 17th this year in Winterport, Maine.
There you go. If you want to go to that, it's Flathead Racing, and you will get a chance to run down the track. That's for sure. No one's any bigger, any smaller. It's about everybody. And there's no egos involved. If you have an issue or something like that, everybody will jump and help. And I know that because it happened to us. Sayonara.